One of the things that, another thing that really a great deal members concerns me, uh, Madam Chair, is that um, these unions that are here at the table today asking um, Senator Murphy to bring this bill forward and bringing it before us today, uh, attempting to change law to remove the oversight that the people currently have through their elected members of the Minnesota House and Minnesota Senate, um, that oversight would be removed in uh, the bill. And uh, these same unions contribute millions of dollars. As a matter of fact, I've added it up uh, to the current party in control, the Democrat party, uh, in the, uh, uh, throughout the state of Minnesota, um, five of these unions, uh, three or four of which testified before us today, have contributed just to my back of the map, napkin math over $2 million uh, to Democrats. Um, the IFO that, uh, that uh, testified before us, uh, and they, they give to members, uh, legislative uh, candidates as well, including uh, Senator Gustafson received $1,000, Senator McQuaid, 500, Senator Mitchell, $1,000. Um, those are some of the legislators and others. Um, but uh, that particular organization, the IFO, contributed $32,500 to uh, Democrat party units in the state as well as $32,500. Members, um, the MAPE PAC, um, which also testified before us in support of this bill to take away the oversight uh, that the people expect us to provide uh, on their behalf, um, contributed $500 to Senator May Quaid, $1,000 to Senator Mitchell, $1,000 to the author of the bill, Senator Murphy, um, and uh, also another $45,250 to Democrat Party units uh, throughout the state of Minnesota, none to the Republican Party units in either of those cases. And, um, also, uh, the Minnesota Nurses Association, which was not before us today, um, and certainly these numbers will be bigger than the, than the 2.031 million that I added up on my napkin, uh, but uh, they contributed uh, 250 to Senator Carlson, sorry, Senator, um, a thousand to Senator Sen Draskowski, thousand to can Senator you state of the content of the bill and the amendment. I, right now it just seems like we're reading Yeah, lists. so I'm just trying to demonstrate the breadth, uh, Madam Chair, uh, with which these unions have um, have contributed to different um, candidates, and in this case members. Um, 500 to Senator May Quaid. Okay, but I think we've made that Senator point, Mitchell. Senator Draskowski. Like, okay. Uh, I'll just we're just, the, we're just I'll reading just lists the, now. I'll just give the totals to the party units, Madam Chair. Um, Minnesota nurses to the party units uh, gave in the last election $302,458. The SIEU to those same party units, Democrat party units, $967,879. And AFSCME, which did also testify before us in support of this bill, Madam Chair, two, again, all of these are Democrat Party units, $683,333, uh, none to Republican Party units in all of those. So, Madam Chair, I'm concerned we have now a, um, a Democrat in the governor's office. Um, we have uh, these unions that uh, seem to uh, align very, 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 very perfectly with the Democrats in the state. Um, and this amendment, Madam Chair, would provide uh, that a labor organization uh, could not make, an make a contribution uh, of sorts of, and the, and the sorts are outlined in the amendment to the governor or the lieutenant governor. Realize, Madam Chair, members, the governor and the lieutenant governor have full control under this bill over these decisions um, that include hundreds of millions of dollars of the people's money uh, and the uh, salaries of 35,000 or more employees in the state of Minnesota. Uh, so 
Uh, and I didn't outline, Madam Chair, the amounts that, uh, that Governor Walz was given by these organizations in the last election, uh, but he was, thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, it also provides that a political party um, unit that receives contributions from these same unions that, Madam Chair, receive their money um, from uh, the original source uh, being taxpayer money, that uh, these dollars that uh, the unions then contribute uh, to the party units could not uh, be used uh, to benefit the governor or lieutenant governor in their election going forward. And that's the amendment, Madam Chair. I think this makes certain that we don't have a, a, a pay to play type situation going on in the state of Minnesota. Uh, it's a concern I have with the language we see before us. Uh, we need uh, to make certain in a government that's lacked a great deal of integrity. Uh, I've talked about the Feeding Our Future program. Uh, the, uh, Senator the Drazkowski, I think we're getting far afield from what is in this amendment when yeah, we're off I, on feeding I, our future. Yeah, I, th I think, uh, Madam Chair, it's, uh, it's normal for members to be able to uh, talk about every angle of their amendment, and I'm going to continue to do that because that's uh, what we do here. Um, so our government already has a high level of corruption. It's been noted. It's ongoing, it's large, it's not being controlled, and we're adding uh, potential for more corruption here. And what this amendment does, members, uh, uh, Madam Chair and Madam Chair, is provides uh, some safeguards for the people of Minnesota, the people that pay the bills. <laughs> The Senator Draskowski, did you uh, previously, Senator Murphy is the chief author of this bill, have you previously um, addressed this to her or is this the first time she's hearing about this? This is the first time, Madam Chair, as every amendment before us today has been as well. So um, what this does, Madam Chair, is that it provides some security for the taxpayers of this state that they are not going to be victims yet again of corruption that we have that seems to be pervasive in this state government. So I'd encourage your adoption as for roll, roll call, Madam Chair. We will